think that it's just hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around a female that owns a comedy theater. A part of that is because there are so few people that do what I do. For example, looking for property when you're dealing in real estate, they don't really have a business model to look at to see, is she gonna be able to do it in this building? And then they always want me to tell a joke. They say, why aren't you funny? And I said, well, because we're doing business right now. So you don't want a comedian doing your books. You don't want a comedian signing a lease. Dallas Comedy House is a comedy theater. We focus on improv, sketch, stand-up, and storytelling. Part of our business is classes, part of our business is shows, and then the other part of our business is corporate training. I started my first business in the fifth grade because my parents said that they would not buy me a Dooney and Burke purse, that it was $300. And I said, okay, well, what if I make the money? And so my grandmother taught me how to make hair bows. And then the summer between my fifth and sixth grade year, I made $4,000 selling hair bows. <laughs> I'd always been interested in comedy, and I started going to some different clubs around the, the city, and I would just watch people perform, and so I quickly fell in love with it, and realized, oh, I like this a lot more than I thought I would. So we're going to play a game called Whoosh Bang Pow. Got it. So you guys know how that works, all right? So um, I'll hop in and play this one with you. With our first class, I was very ambitious. So I had 36 spots, I think, available for registration. And four people signed up. So I reached out to two friends that we asked if, would you please take the class for free? Because it seemed like six seemed more legit than four. So that was our first class. The biggest challenge at the beginning was just awareness. I knew that it was a successful business plan because we had seen it working in other cities. <laughs> but a lot of people are very nervous to go see a comedy show because they're worried, what if it's not funny? Or what if I'm offended? A lot of people think they're gonna be heckled if they're sitting in the front. So a lot of people get nervous. <laughs> Improv teaches us to become leaders in the most unconventional way. We learn to lead from the bottom up. You probably are gonna have some divas. You're gonna have some people who are irresponsible. You're gonna have some people who are high maintenance. A lot of what we're teaching them in these workshops, which to me is the most important tool in improvisational comedy, is to be an active listener, to actually listen to what people are saying and then respond. Wait, then that means that the drawer is $30 short. The margins in comedy, well, let me say this. People don't go into comedy because of the margins. But I know that what we don't make in revenue, we make in being able to see how it's changed people's lives. People finding a community or finding their voice. People who have come up to me and said I've had the worst anxiety, but after I started taking improv classes, now I'm very uh, open to coming up and talking to people in public. All that stuff is far beyond any revenue that we could make. <laughs>